let's go and see what else we got here about again primary packaging okay so this here this is a thermoforming packaging okay so this means that this plastic tray around here has been uh, formed inside the packaging machine so there is a, a thin film that get uh, sucked uh, and formed with a um, high temperature molding then the product is filled inside the trays and only after uh, the plastic film that close the package here is sealed okay so this is a thermoforming uh, thermoforming machine thermoforming unit this thermoforming unit is very typical for uh, fresh food okay this is also called a fresh box okay fresh box are used for uh, mm, fresh pasta fresh ravioli Mm, pre-cooked meals, uh, sliced and cured meats, sometimes fish, cheese sometimes also. Uh, even if, as we will see, cheese uh, will be more in the other kind of packaging that we are going to see in a minute, which is, let me put this aside, this one, okay? So this is blue cheese, okay? Uh, the blue cheese goes inside a pre formed tray like this one so this is already stamped it's it's placed inside the thermo sealing machine where the operator will place uh, these slice of cheese inside uh, inside the tray and only after the film will be sealed uh, with the high temperature uh, on uh, on the edges okay so uh, this is also another kind of fresh box again used for fresh food cheese and other kind of and other kind of products uh, very typical for uh, uh, making longer uh, shelf life for uh, the um, fresh foods okay so now that we have seen the primary shapes of the products and how they are made let's check out the main points to consider when uh, conveying these kind of fresh boxes and which are the tricks uh, to deliver them around correctly without uh, any possible mistakes we will see that using an ipad to draw them draw some line and so i will talk over that one okay so let's get started okay so most packages, most uh, fresh boxes, are rigid enough to sit on a wide range of conveyors and uh, this means that uh, we, uh, according to the needs that we have, we can use almost any kind of conveyors. We can use tabletop, we can use modular chain, we can use uh, belt uh, and the width of the conveyor can be either as wide as, as the box or even smaller so if we take the cross section of the uh, typical fresh box it's going to be something like this with the product inside and the film to seal it okay and we use green just to indicate the conveyor we could use either a conveyor which is as wide as the box or even wider or alternatively we can use let's take this out of the way we can use a conveyor which has a cross section which is smaller this can be used in for many different reasons we will get uh, into that uh, case by case scenario okay so this is the really first point okay so second point is the following uh, sometimes the bottom of the conveyor so underneath okay this surface over here could be uh, mm, irregular uh, it could have uh, some bumps it could have uh, uh, some uh, shapes that are coming from the molding so for this reason uh, it is possible that uh, um, this can create some problem uh, in the handling of the products uh, and uh, just to give you an idea of what can happen let's 
cancel all this and take a look at the conveyor and the box from above let's draw let's say a rectangular fresh box and our again green conveyor uh, the typical situation that we have we could have is that an irregular shape could create problem in two basic points so one would be the curve section of the conveyor and one would be the passage from one conveyor to the other okay in this case we have two options one uh, is to basically have uh, side guides if the, if the box uh, uh, is tall enough to, to be using side guides to keep the product very tight inside the side guides and prevent it from rotating like this that is the kind of thing that could happen with the irregular passage alternatively another thing that we could do if the box for example is too thin is to have the conveyor with a high grip surface so rubber surface of the conveyor okay so this is the uh, first point that is needed to take care when we are dealing uh, with uh, fresh boxes and conveying in ar it around so it doesn't matter very much the um, with the conveyor but this is a point that we need to take care of the second situation that we have to take care of is that sometimes fresh boxes are uh, uh, made in a different way uh, this is particularly true because these days there is a lot of fight against uh, uh, too much plastic materials inside the packaging so you will see sometimes uh, a different kind of fresh box which is made basically by a thin layer of paper with the product maybe meat laying over it with uh, a thin plastic thin film that is closing it okay so when conveying this kind of product around uh, we always have to take care of the things and again this is the cross section of the con of the product that we are seeing so when we take care of this kind of products we need to always to beware that these are dangerous points okay so what we do we basically use the same tricks that we did for the flow pack okay so we need to have a conveyor that is at least as wide as the product and we need a side guide that is beginning below the surface of the conveyor so if the blue one is the surface of the conveyor and the product is laying over it the side guides must begin from the low in order to avoid any pinching point for the fins of the product okay so the third point that I need to take care of is the fact that the product is in fact rigid but uh, since it's a molding of some kind it will always have a shape like this okay so there is going to be some entering some conic, conic shape again if you look at the cross section and this uh, affect the way uh, that the product behave especially if uh, we are considering uh, accumulation so uh, the fact that the, the fresh box trays are rigid means that they can accumulate but the fact that they have this kind of shape uh, it means that there is a very tight limit to how much it can accumulate the length of the train of accumulation is very uh, very short so let's let's redraw this with two trays one close to the other okay something like this uh, well okay 
this is the typical shape let's blow the film over it okay and also the product inside okay now if these two products two or more products are accumulating and this is the direction so from here we got pressure okay uh, the risk, uh, the minimum risk that we have uh, is that, that the, when they touch each other in this point they will try to do something like this and so the result would be the product putting itself in this kind of situation and eventually even jumping one over the other okay now to avoid this, uh, the most uh, uh, common thing that we can do is to put uh, some kind of uh, roof, okay, so a side guide over the boxes that would keep them down. Um, this is also is okay for more rigid boxes and for uh, higher ones. Okay, uh, not uh, so great uh, for uh, uh, very thin ones that can uh, uh, overlap anyway uh, and uh, get stuck or jammed. Uh, even another case that we need to consider is that some, um, some fresh boxes, especially for the cheese industry, uh, like soft cheese like ricotta or something like that, uh, they have uh, a um, very much conic shape with a, a small base and a, a bigger upper part and sometimes it's not even a conic one but it's a mm, very uh, small with some kind of this shape okay this is not only as the risk of uh, tipping over but uh, uh, it's highly unstable so even with uh, uh, when we convey it around uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, to have the product touch any side guides or so on and so forth so in this case it is uh, important to remember that uh, uh, accumulation for the fresh boxes has a very tight tight limit so it can be done uh, but it needs to be extremely small. The fourth point I would like to point out is that uh, both thermoformed and thermosealed products typically uh, are delivered by the uh, packaging machine in batches and uh, in multiple rows. This means that uh, uh, in most cases they will need to be merged in a single line to be further packed, uh, packed labeled, uh, marked, whatever it is, the process, the packaging process of the line. Uh, this topic is uh, mm, a pretty big one, so I would like to keep for uh, another video because uh, it's really worth it to, to get more, more deep in uh, uh, how this merging is made and what are the treatments, uh, the packaging uh, treatments that uh, are going to be dealt on these products after the, the, the primary machines. Okay, so this is it for this the episode of uh, Conveyor U. See you in the next episode uh, with another kind of packaging, primary packaging. So this is it for this episode of Conveyor U. See you on the next episode for another kind of packaging. Have a good one.